Welcome to another Wednesday edition of these crazy videos that the brew-dudes.com peeps do. We just call these brew dudes. That's what I like to call us. Because there's all these the brew dudes. Like these brew dudes. Because you're a brew dude too. Even if you're a dudette, it's fine. Whatever. We don't discriminate. No, we're these brew dudes. In our last video, if you were paying attention, uh, we talked about wine stabilizers, in particular Camden tablets because they had a couple of different applications. Uh, but there's another one that we've run into while we've expanded our home brewing uh, applications ourselves. Um, potassium sorbate. Now I even see this as a preservative listed on the side of my uh, pressed apple juice that I can buy in the grocery store. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Did not say cider. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always something that I, I look for if I'm looking to ferment this pressed apple juice because I see it as a hurdle to get over if I'm going to add yeast to it. So let's talk about potassium sorbate. How is it different from what we talked about before, which is, you know, potassium metabisulfite? Yes. Right? Right. Seems to be two different compounds. Two different compounds. But they do the same thing? They do similar things. Similar so things. Sorbate, sorbate also uh, can enter cells and interferes with the fermentation cycle and the glycolysis cycle of generating energy. Okay. It's also microbial static. It's not Cidal. microbial cidal. Right. Um, one of the interesting as attributes of it is because it is part of the uh, uh, sorbic acid families that it has the ability to lower the pH ah. inside cells. Got it. Which uh, inhibits them uh, and makes them somewhat toxic, just makes them unhealthy and yep. they, they will not proliferate yep. uh, that way. Um, and sorbate is also um, used in the same fashion that you would use metabisulfite. In fact, these things are usually used in parallel with each other as kind of a one-two punch because their mechanisms are similar but different. slightly different um, in terms of how they, they work. Um, one thing that we should mention when you're talking about using these things to as preservatives or for stabilization of, of your musts or your finished fermentation products like your wines um, or cider or your mead, um, these things aren't like ubiquitous across yeast, molds, and bacteria. Different strains of bacteria, different strains of mold all have different levels ah. of, of effectiveness okay. on these things. So okay. and typically these things are actually best at molds and yeasts and not necessarily that strong at bacteria. So okay. that's always something to keep in mind. Interesting. About you, so you still have to sanitize and stay clean. When it, whether you're using sulfites or sorbates, mm -hmm. you still have to stay clean. Okay. Um, um, but the nice thing about these things, they're not, you don't have to use them in really high quantities in order to get the, the effects uh, of them. Uh, let me ask you a question. Okay. Have you, you've, so you've successfully fermented yeah. uh, sorbated pressed apple juice? <sighs> sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Does it come out a little sweet, or is it? Yeah, it's it just you know I think I uh, gave it a try. The activity wasn't to my liking. It was mm -hmm. it seemed really slow and sluggish, and I didn't know if I should add more yeast mm -hmm. to continue and like a, to so start, that yeah. So that brings it back to what we talked about yeah. in one of our last videos too. Yeah. Is about uh, microbial load, right? Yes. And that one thing that I've always seen on forums and things I've probably recommended myself is that if you're gonna try to ferment stuff with preservative in it, you've got to come in with a, a large pitch of yep. yeast, slightly yep. larger than what you'd normally Expect, would, yep. and it should be very active too, right? Sure. So if you're going to make a starter of some of this stuff, it should be at high Krausen when it yep. goes in to overcome those effects of the sorbet. Yeah, stuff. I don't think I prepared as much as I thought I should, mm -hmm. and I gave it a try, and you know what, it's one of the first things that I've dumped mm. before I've gotten to that process, to the point of, you know, Making that decision of bottling or, or storage of some of some K, of some format. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just said it was during I don't know a few years ago. I went stir crazy with a whole bunch of different cider experimentations, and um, I don't know. There was some issue that I had where one of my carboys fell over in my basement, and I said I'm I'm gonna plow through. I'm gonna you know get some more cider from the store and. You know, knowing what I knew about potassium sorbate, I thought I could just power through, but I couldn't, and mm -hmm. so that became, you know, experiment loss number two. The thing, too, is as fermentation is going on, yeah. the pH of, of any product is going down, yeah. and the alcohol is going up. Those things in itself 
start to stabilize the product as well. Yeah. So just like trying to restuck a, a, restart a stuck beer fermentation, um, it's very difficult to take yeast and add yeast. A lot of people want to rip open a dry package and put it in. It's probably not going to go. Yeah. You, you need to give that, that you, you have to rehydrate that yeast yeah. or use liquid Feed yeast. It. Give yeah. it some sugar, get it to start bubbling, yeah. make sure it's active. Give it eight hours to really get going and, and then put, put it, it in. in. Yeah. So. so I think for next time, yes. Yeah. So did I did I see some uh, activity of f fermentation? Sure, but I was at that point I w I gave up. Yeah. And, then <laughs> right, I, and basically I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to find pressed apple juice that has no potassium sorbate or any kind of preservative in it, and I'm just going to start over again. And you know, take three was yeah. was the one that actually worked. I'm always a fan of starting over. L learn what you learn and then yes, start and over. Yes, and then yeah, right. Go back to what you know and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And do it. Um, that, 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 that's how you get better. That's, that's right. That's all there is to it. That's so. what these brew dudes do. That's what these brew dudes do. That's right. What, when we, we actually have a guest. We'll have our first guest coming in. We'll have a guest. We're going to have a guest. There's a friend of ours that's uh, uh, doing their first uh, cider yep. experimentation yep. or foray into and yep. making cider. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've said once it's ready, you bring it over and we'll have bring a tasting. We'll going to do a taste. We'll do it right here in Studio D. Do you have cider going? You have some yes, cider? Yes, I do. I have cider going. So we could do a whole bunch. I have like we'll cider do side from last year. Yep. I have my crayon cider from a few years ago, yep. which I'm sure tastes like vinegar at this point. Yay. That's great. But yeah, we'll have a cider palooza probably around the new year. Cider palooza. Sounds good. Man. I don't know. I don't Sounds know. good. I come up with these names, they stink. That's all right. That's all right. Who's counting? Not me. Not you. <laughs> All right, so that's potassium sorbate. Potassium sorbate. <laughs> if you use it with uh, metabolic bisulfite, then you're yeah. you're tacking on both. It's it's like fighting a war on two fronts, but being successful in doing that. Yep. <laughs> Something like that. All right, for these brew dudes, John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Brew on.